Sherm talks about the origins of the real estate program at Berkeley and also how you got here. Well, the oranges were rather interesting. When World War II ended, the National Association of Realtors uh, was setting up a new program nationally. They hoped that many state schools would set up colleges of real estate. The point being that they hoped to become a profession similar to lawyers or doctors or things of that sort. So the California realtors came to the university and said, we would like to set up a college of real estate. And Gordon Sproul, who was president of the university, in effect said, that's not possible, but we can make some arrangements for you. Real estate is an important enough profession in the state. And Dean Grether of the business school said, well, we teach uh, transportation, we teach insurance, it would make sense probably to teach real estate. Well, when Grether was asked what the business school would do, his first problem was, I'll have to get some people who are interested who'd be willing to t teach it. Since it's not being taught anywhere, we're in effect, we'll have to start from scratch. And the first person he found was Paul Wendt. At the same time, Grether was out looking for new people for the school. He came to Harvard where I was and said, would you be willing to come to Berkeley and teach in this real estate program that we were setting up? I said, yes. When we started, there was practically no research in urban economics. We were really the first to do research in this area. We did what was the best study of the house building industry. We did some of the original work on the effect of racism on prices of housing. In the Powell Street station, you look something like this. We also were working on planning for the development of the Bay Area. And then you board a train. What would happen when BART was opened, how that would affect the Bay Area. A long list of subjects that were very successful. Uh, how about yourself? How did you decide you're interested in housing? Well, the reason I was interested in housing was that uh, I, one, I wrote my undergraduate thesis on the cycling consumer durables. Then the war broke out in Europe, and I went to work for the Federal Reserve, but still continued to work on the business cycle. And as part of that, I was convinced that a major problem causing the cycle were the fluctuations in housing. So I decided that at some point I'd go back and get my PhD study that area, and that would be my life interest. I was a professor here at Berkeley, and I received a call one day whether I would go talk to the president, to Johnson. A vacancy became available on the Federal Reserve, and my name came up and uh, apparently impressed him enough so that he appointed me to the Federal Reserve. My most important paper turned out to be the origination of mortgage-backed securities. Uh, in the recession of 68, the housing market was hit hard, and the government couldn't do anything about it. It had, it had set up Fannie Mae, Federal National Mortgage Association, to put more money into housing when it was needed. But the problem was it was part of the government, and therefore its loans showed up as part of a government deficit. And one of the ideas I had was that if Fannie Mae could be taken out of the government and made a government-sponsored agency, it wouldn't be part of the budget, and therefore its loans would not show up as a deficit. We set up a committee and we talked to mortgage lenders around the country, but also to bond buyers, plus banks. And we got the idea that Fannie Mae could issue collateralized bond, mortgage bonds, that it could take its mortgages, package them, put them into a trust for the bond, and then issue the bonds. So that was really the start of mortgage-backed securities. After you came back 
from the uh, Federal Reserve, you had to restart the real estate program. I wonder how that all happened. When I came back, I found that the center really had almost disappeared. And the dean asked me whether I would take it over and see what could be done about it. He actually thought that my recommendation would be to close it down. But I felt it was too important that if we could get the right person to run it, it would be better to start from a fresh with a new person than to close it down. And I was very, very lucky. I found Ken Rosen, and he obviously made a much greater success of it than it had been previously.